So this topic is about the restricted data flow and in this uh, topic we will learn about the uh, data flow control technologies. So what is the requirement? Requirement is uh, like segment the control system via zones and conduits to uh, limit the unnecessary data flow. So in Purdue model also we studied about the zones like how can we segregate our control system architecture into the zones and then Conduits, conduits are the just link between the levels. It could be a firewall, it could be a switch or router. So those all uh, communication channels are called conduits. So basically this is the requirement as per the 62443 standard. So uh, if you can see this uh, diagram, we have uh, previously discussed also this architecture. This is not as per Purdue model, but yes, of course we can see it as a, a zone model we can say. So what we can do, we can basically, we can do this restricted data flow to guarantee that no undesired communication or information flow uh, occurs between two zones. So we first aim is to uh, prevent any undesired communication, then real time alerts are raised in case violations are de detected. So let us suppose we have put a firewall here and uh, this is zone two and zone through and there is some uh, illegit or the, some undesired communication uh, is happening here in that case what will happen this firewall will drop that packet and, and uh, the alert will be raised and it will be sent to the log server or the seam of uh, the environment so this is how we can uh, do real-time monitoring and we can prevent undesired communication between the zones so earlier if you, if you remember this figure there it was a flat network and there was no any firewall between the zones so now once if we implement a firewall here also if from zone one to zone through if some communication is being tried which is not supposed to then then in that case this firewall can also raise the alert and and that will uh, be monitored by the system or if you have a SOC environment then SOC analyst can see all those alerts then uh, a network device at zone boundaries will provide the capability to prevent general purpose person to person messages from being received from users or systems external to control systems so uh, this is basically talking about a firewall at the zone boundary so if it is a zone one so this is its boundary and at boundary there should be a boundary protection device and it, it is a firewall similarly you can see between each zones there are firewall here 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 there are multiple firewalls so these firewalls are acting as a, a zone protection devices then uh, yes uh, uh, this zone boundary protection device firewall is not the only device so we we can put unidirectional gateways we can put data diodes we can even we can use sometimes a router with access control list to uh, prevent some of the communications but it will not have uh, like antivirus capability or intrusion pre prevention detection capabilities or some uh, other capabilities what firewall has but yes router with ACL or layer 3 switch with ACL can also serve the purpose but but it's not exactly the firewall the control system self support partitioning of data application and services based on criticality to facilitate implementing a zoning model so we need to see the criticality whether uh, which is system or which is more critical so here we can see like uh, we have PLCs, everything and all these database server story and this is more critical than the corporate zone because this is not directly impacting our process parameters or the production. So basically we need to see whatever zones or whatever devices are close to the process control. Those are the more critical. Those are the time sensitive network. But if some and and in case of like we need to see that if some system is down what will be the impact on the direct production so if let us suppose if this communication goes off between application server and this field location so it will directly impact the production so it this may might be this all systems failed uh, this become offline this becomes offline so in that case it will be a direct loss of view loss of monitoring and loss of production of the environment but but if uh, let us suppose a business server or business workstation goes off it will not have much impact because already this is being a separate internal trusted zone and all communications are going inside it but if this web server goes off, dns server goes off, it won't have any impact on the production so this is how we can segregate that which uh, devices or which zone is more critical for my business or which one is the less critical so similarly uh, related to that we need to put a proper firewalls proper zoning model uh, in our place 
so this is about the restricted data flow how we need to uh, make a zoom model how to restrict the data now uh, how can we do so basically like we talked about the firewall so there are basically three things which we can implement to achieve this uh, segmentation so we can uh, do with the firewall so firewalls can be used to logically enforce user defined rule sets of network traffic so we can put network traffic uh, rules like uh, from ip address uh, a to ip address b if something is going on it should be allowed or uh, if uh, from this set of networks if uh, this protocol rdp protocol is accessed then it should be allowed if uh, ssh from this uh, uh, location a to location b or zone a to zone b is uh, done it should not be allowed denied so we need to make multiple uh, rules like this only so commonly placed at the network boundaries as we saw in a previous picture all all these firewalls are placed at the boundaries as a, as it is a uh, boundary protection device firewalls can uh, limit both incoming and outgoing traffic based on variety of characteristics so there are uh, types of firewalls also so we have uh, industrial application firewalls so nowadays uh, these firewalls can understand the uh, industrial protocols also like opc dnp modbus so they can tcp modbus so they can uh, uh, filter out based on those protocols also we have uh, next generation firewalls which has many capabilities like uh, intrusion detection system intrusion prevention system it has application allow listing also it has antivirus also so nowadays firewalls have evolved uh, there are uh, also on type of the basic topology of the firewall the the types of firewalls are like packet capture firewall those are purely dependent on the ip based rule so if you uh, you need to put the rules based on the ip from aip to bip allow this uh, protocol then it will be allowed then we got the uh, deep packet inspection so these firewalls then uh, check each packet what what is inside the each packet what type of message is there what is the payload contents of the packet but it took more computing power and it uh, as the functionality increases the also also the cost increases so we need to decide like uh, whether a deep packet inspection firewalls are required or not then we have a stateful firewalls also so that that started understanding the state of the communications or the session so let us suppose if terminal server is connected by a remote uh, desktop from somewhere so in that session if something happens and then that is uh, it takes a snapshot or control of that session so it allows that activities only in that session only and if session gets uh, closed then again new session new authentic uh, identification and authentication uh, need to be uh, do again so session aware firewalls are there so those are also then uh, pretty good then then also there are types of firewall like application firewall on which you can uh, restrict even the application so uh, if you want to uh, do a restriction based on the application so that can also be done in those types of so moving ahead like we discussed about my types of the firewalls uh, and then vlan is a very good tool if we want to just do logical separation we do not want to invest much in physical hardware then vlan can be used to logically separate areas uh, within a network when physical segregation not feasible or due to cost of priority measure so uh, vlan what what is vlan uh, you need to search like on google you will find many explanation of vlan in in short i can explain that vlan on a, on a single switch or a single firewall you can make multiple networks on the single switch so if you say that vlan 1 2 3 4 5 i have configured and one is for the process communication another is for opc communication vlan third is only for the data upload to pi server vlan 4 is uh, only for the backup vlan 5 is only for the management of the switches so this is how on the single physical medium you can create multiple vlans and you can allot a specific bandwidth to each of these vlans so that it can use the same physical medium but all these communications will remain logically separated so this is the concept of the vlan and this is a good method and proven method that we can utilize these things in for segmentation also and uh, only uh, threat here is that uh, it is susceptible to uh, vlan hopping attack but for vlan hopping attack we need a physical access to that switch or firewall so if we limit the physical access to that switch or firewall then uh, yes we can uh, somehow prevent the vlan the vlan hopping attacks also and then we discussed about the unidirectional gateways also so unidirectional gateways are like a, a, a one one example is data diode so you can send information from only one side to other side so let us suppose if you have a, 
uh, system uh, here in this zone 3 and you just want to send uh, something to business server only one way you do not want in reply so let us suppose you have a log uh, correlation engine here so you want to just send the logs from this uh, this zone to this zone so you can put a data diode here and just up, up link it to uh, this corporate lab so in that case what will happen only only one way communication will happen so there won't be any threat from this way so those one way communications are like it is physically bond and physically separated so there is no chance of any back communication because uh, led type of communication is from one way is only there so if you search about the data diode you'll find more details but in uh, general it is like uh, transmission in single direction like we can send syslogs we can send uh, ftp files from one way to another way so those are some applications of unidirectional gateway so this is all about the network segmentation i think hope you understood why and wh how to do the network segmentation what purpose it solves so let's move to the next topic